Wisdom and Yushan. The Oracle of Wisdom was not well respected by her peers. Rare was it indeed for another sidereal to associate with her, and only a few more of the gods could tolerate her doomsaying presence. She had been extremely gifted in tending the tapestry. Her insights and manipulation of the weave were unmatched by any of the other children of secrets. This, and because no cast of Jupiter had ever shone from her brow, even in the most extraordinary expenditures of essence, had only added to her fantastic popularity. To be titled an oracle among the children of secrets was a very high honor. Being bestowed this by an entity that veiled itself from the very readers of the web placed her under increased suspicion. It was certainly fair to say she was an outcast in Yushan, or at least an outsider. These anomalies in her exaltation and abilities were one of the reasons the higher-ups in the sidereal universe hadn't exiled her from the Order completely. She was undoubtedly connected to some seemingly unstoppable cataclysmic event. This is all anyone knew, and they only knew it because of her visions and strong ties of fate that held her in their sway. Something more powerful than the celestial deities in Yushan had kept Wisdom's path completely hidden from scrying eyes. To better monitor her place in it all, she was often called upon to perform the duties all sidereals had to perform. Her time in heaven was most often spent as messenger or diplomat. She was called on to the council when her gifts were needed, to update the court and the gods of the goings on within the material universe, and more than once to stand trial for her unacceptable actions. They definitely kept their unwavering eyes on poor wisdom, who only wanted to sift through life, bringing the signs her gods gave her, and helping people where she could. It was safe to say she had never been to Yushan, the beautiful heaven realm of the benevolent gods and the exalted, as a welcome guest. On her last trip to Yushan, she received a cordial invitation, through message by charm, carried on the wings of a dragonfly, to spend a week as a guest in some deity's manch. Mans. The host offered no name, just a very appealing invitation of a week's vacation, which would conclude with the exchange of very relevant information. She felt her fate compelling her to attend this meeting, despite the fact that none in Yushan had ever shown her even the hospitality that they showed their, their servants. In 300 years, she had never been invited anywhere in the realm of the guest. Even with the promise of valuable or information, hesitation and suspicion never touched her mind. This was a trip she simply had to make. To know the world is to serve it. She loaded her satchel with her few precious belongings and set forth on the most important journey in her long troubled life. She set forth from her modest hut, an eastern-style one-room home, which sat islanded in a small clear green pond. Exotic water foliage clustered through the water, pink and white flowers set atop deep green leaves. Wisdom had personally carried in flat, sparkling rocks to rim the white sand beach that extended out to a circle of golden trees, marking where her haven ended and the rest of the banal universe had begun. She stepped out of her house onto the deep pond surface. Magic lighted her step as she moved towards the only entrance or exit to her domain, a gray stone path stretching the length from the water's edge to the circular grove. Specifically, the path led between the two tallest trees surrounding her manse. For centuries, the trees had shimmered with golden leaves and deep red wood. In the sixty years Wisdom had been residing in the sanctuary of the grove, she had never seen the trees change. Now, for the first time, it would seem that they had changed somehow without her notice. The leaves of the two trees that stood sentry for so long over their ancient manse had turned a deep, near-blood red, and for the first time, they had begun to fall. As she made her way across the cobblestone path towards the two altered trees, she observed the changing pattern of colors around the falling leaves. The red was spreading, like oil, infiltrating the leaves in nearby trees, staining the plants on the ground where they had fallen. Enthralled by the phenomena she was witnessing, she hastened her step, feeling the fate stripping from the mysterious red flora. She approached the crimson anomalies, her heart began to race. She knelt down into the grass, reaching for a fallen leaf. As her fingers touched the leaf, it became liquid, staining her fingers as it dripped back to the ground. The inky red fluid smelled so familiar, so inviting. She didn't even notice herself moving her fingers to her lips. And as her lips closed around her pointer finger, her sight left her. She fell backwards, unconscious as the vision struck her mind. Red liquid, the same color as the falling leaves, flowed in every corner of the land, frothing and churning over village after village. 
No castle is high or strong enough to stand against the tsunami. Black rain fell in torrents all around her as wisdom ascended through her vision, beating down into the tide of crimson, stirring the sea of blood until black crested waves began to black out the small bit of illumination the sun was providing. A black sun. The smell of boiled blood filled her nostrils, then poured out of her mouth, a steaming eiger spewed from her belly. Her eyes opened, and wisdom shot up coughing blood onto her sleeve. When her eyes and her mind cleared, she gasped in horror at what they revealed to her. The two red trees above her still stood out from the group, as the leaves were now an inky black. All the remaining trees that touched the circle that surrounded Wisdom's home were now the same deep red that covered her attire. The taste of blood became strong on her mouth, forcing her to cough again. The only leaves that remained iridescent gold were those already on the ground and untouched by the corrupting red flow falling from every tree in the grove. Before she stood, Wisdom gathered up a few of these golden leaves and uncovered a small acorn. While doing so, she shuddered. She walked out of her haven under pitch black trees that once held her very essence within them. As she passed them, her suspicions became very real. She would never again return to this place. She would never again return home.